Who's my script? Who's my scripture reader for today? All righty. Matthew 28, 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now have told you. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, collapsed at his feet, and worshipped him. <laughs> then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There will there they will see me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. To be honest, if we were just to read the passion narrative, that preaches on its own. But we're not lazy today. But today, this is it. This is the end of the line. Our journey is complete, this Lenten journey that we are on. We have made it to the cross, and now we are looking at the temple this day. And to be quite frank, the tomb is empty. We began Lent by wandering in the wilderness, acknowledging our hungers. Yet we encountered Jesus on the way. We came to him by night for a confusing conversation about claiming life and a promise of love that we cling to even in our darkness. <clears throat> Excuse me. Especially in our darkness. We met him in the middle of our day when we hoped we wouldn't be noticed. And he told us everything that we have done this day. And yet he still loves us always. So we ran. We told everyone we knew, even those we had hoped to avoid by going to the well at noon. We felt him rubbing mud on our eyes so that we could see what we have been what, yeah, what we have never seen before. And a whole new vista opened up before us. And even those around us couldn't see what we saw and doubt that we were anything other than the blind one we had seen before. We reveled in the light and we brought into, that he brought into our lives. But then the stone that we had been hiding behind, the stone that blocked our way forward, that cut off our air, that crushed our hope, suddenly rolled away at his command. And we walked forth into the light, blinking in the light of life. He did that for us. Wanting to stop and, oh boy, hold on. Where did I go here? We wept with tears of joy and hope. We clung to him, wanting to stop and dwell, to set up camp, and to just be in the moment. And yet Christ wouldn't stop. He kept moving forward. He went, we went with him, not wanting the light to dim in our lives, not wanting the life to fade from us. We went with him, waving our palms and shining with joy and with hope. Hosanna, save us, claim us, want us. We are yours for now and always yours. He rode on our carpet of many colors as we cast our coats before him. 
We acknowledge our shouts and promises of allegiance with sadness we couldn't grasp. Our joy was real. Our commitment was deep. We were his. And yet he still kept moving. We sat at the table as he lifted the bread. He told us that this bread was him. The bread was somehow was him. His body broken into many pieces as we needed, would need now into eternity. We ate with clouded eyes and confused minds. He was here, right here with us in this very moment. Why did we need this bread to be him though? The cup he raised, giving thanks for the fruit of the vine and the sweetness we would drink. Then he gave it to us and said, drink, because it was him. His blood, his very life, poured out as though a sword had pierced his side, flowing down to cover us, to cover our sin. All of that would keep us from him, from clinging to him, as we had just promised we would. So we drank, tasting the bitter and the sweet, the pain and the promise, both. It burned all the way down as we gazed into the eyes and heard his words of the betrayal to come. We prayed with him in the garden at night, tired, too tired to stay awake to comfort him. But sleep overcame us. And we left him alone to rail against the night and succumb to the will of the one who sent him. We walked with them when they came, with swords and clubs, with hatred and fear. We walked with them as they tore him away from us, beat him and abused him. We walked with them as they laid him on a sins of death, a cross of shame. We walked with, actually, no we didn't. We didn't walk with him but we wanted to, we thought we did, we promised we would, but it was our fear that tripped us up once again. How many times had he told us not to be afraid? And yet we deserted him in this hour. We denied him, we betrayed him, and now he walks alone down those palm strewn streets, out to the hill, and he gave himself up for us. And the world wept and shook as the darkness descended upon us. And now we are here, the end of the line. It is as if a conductor is making a final announcement, last stop. Nowhere left to go. We stumble blindly in our own personal darkness, trying to find an exit, wondering what happened to hope. We gasp for the breath that now escapes us, as though we had just run a marathon and can't breathe without feeling the pain of our exertion. Desperately needing the wind to blow, the air to fill our lungs again, but there is nothing but stillness, but emptiness. It presses down on us, a weight too heavy for us to bear. All we can think of is death, his death, our death. He carried us with him when he went. When he breathed his last breath, he took the air out of our lungs. And now we lie gasping for life, like the fish we caught the day when he found us and sent us out into the deep water and all those fish are dead like us. When we, can't, when we can think of nothing but death, where else should we go? We head to the cemetery just to look, just to see, to see, our, our, see the only reality we know anymore, the only reality we have, death, his death and our death. So we go just to look. What did you see? What did you go to see? 
the Marys who went sightseeing in the cemetery, what did they go to see? Death, tombs, stones, shrouds. They went to weep at the end, the end of the line, with nowhere else to go. Nothing else to hope, just death. And life surprised them again. Not a quiet, unassuming life, not a gentle fluttering of doves, but the ground shook. The stone rolled. A being of light came and sat on the stone as though it was a royal throne that he was keeping warm for someone else. And when he spoke, it was like an organ playing, like strings being plucked, notes reverberating through the air. Do not be afraid. <clears throat> Still, those words are said. Our final nemesis isn't death after all, but it's fear. The fear of death, but also the fear of abandonment, the fear of failure. The fear of disappointing the one we love more than life itself. We are gripped by fears too many to name that are crippling us, that are binding us, that are limiting us in ways we can barely comprehend. And yet it is still said, do not be afraid. The being of light saying to us, don't be afraid. Now he's saying with a smile because he was in on the divine joke, so to speak. Because this angel already knew the punchline. And I know you, the angel says, I know you seek the dead one, the died one, the killed one. But there is no person here with that same name or address. No death here, even in the realm of the dead. No one by the name of Jesus, the dead one, unable to forward any sort of mail to a person unknown, the orchestra sitting on the stone could barely contain the laughter, but this angel chuckled. If you want Jesus the risen, I can give you directions. After all, I am your Google Maps. I am your GPS of sorts. She sniggered behind the shining hand. Go, the song swells. Go, the strings vibrate. The horn announced, go! But go where? Go home. Go home, the place you have run from because it bores you. Go home, the place you run to because you think it will keep the world at arm's length, though it fails to do so on a regular basis. Go home, and there you will see him, surrounded the familiar that, looks, that now looks different because he breathed life into you. Surrounded by the ordinary that now crackles with the lightning of divinity, the earthquake of love that is stronger than death. Go home to the place you felt most alone and know you will never be lonely again. Go and see the world in your backyard. Go and see heaven and the earth you know best. So they ran. They, so they run because they can't think of anything else to do, any reason not to run. They run full of hope and the fear that simply won't release its grip on them, on us. We run with a word, a message, that we will see him. That we will see him, not the one that's dead, but the one who used to be dead, the one who hung on the cross, that was stripped and beaten and spat upon. The risen one this day, we will see. The alive one. And you'll see him where you live, at home. You will see him, and that is the Easter message. You will see him, the living one, the alive one. And in seeing, you'll be able to breathe deeply yet again, because it is the breath of life. I was breathed into us in the beginning when God breathed into Moses, or not Moses, uh, Adam. So my friends, this day, the tomb is empty. The dead one is not there, but, the, but he lives. 
He lives today. He lives here. He lives here. He lives here. He lives all over. The tomb is empty. The bells of the church should ring frantically as if there's some emergency, but yet we are just merely trying to tell the world that he is risen. We should all jump for joy this day and dance like we never danced before. We should be jumping up in the air, clicking our heels all the way back home. How many of you can do that? How many of you want to try? That should be the question. I may be fat, but I'll still try. But today is a joyous day. Today is not a mournful day, but it's one that we should shout for joy. It's hallelujah, amen. Why do you think I correct you guys and you're like, hallelujah, amen? No! Say it with gumption. That is what today is all about. Because it is Easter that Christ has risen this day, amen? amen. Yes. We're going to try that one more time. Amen? Amen. Woo! Let's get pumped. Today is a joyous day. I wish we had stuff for lunch here. We can have lunch afterwards. But my friends and family, happy Easter. Hallelujah and amen.